different contracts depending on the needs you have as an artist. Am I correct to say that, uh, Putsaid? So if where you just need distribution, you enter into a contract that's specific for those purposes. Um, we're nearly at the end of my program. Yeah? Then I'll allow you to ask your own question. I, I can ask now. Um, uh, Kai, yeah? we only spoke about wealth creation. Right. Um, at our last engagement when we met uh, before coming here, we, 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 met, we met everyone before we came here. We made sure that we engaged with everyone before we came here. We spoke about wealth protection, right? So as an artist, my biggest asset is my voice, right? How do I then, in the case where um, maybe I have a flu and I can't perform for a certain period or I'm hospitalized for whatever case, right? How do I then ensure that I have an income within that period? Something that perhaps uh, temporarily uh, disables you from earning your income. So a temporary disability could be um, losing your voice, for instance, or becoming involved in a car accident, or some sort of longer term um, disability. So in order to protect your income or your ability to earn an income, you can look at products such as um, life insurance, long-term life insurance policies. And what they do is you get something called an income protector. So in those period of time while you are per uh, temporarily disabled, um, you can then still ensure that you earn that, that income um, based on what you were previously doing before you were disabled. So what that can do is make sure that when you have certain expenses and certain things that you need to keep up with and pay on your, in terms of your budget, that your temporary disability kicks in and then subsidizes the income that you would have earned until you are able to be back on your feet and you've recovered from whatever the, the temporary disability was. Um, so that's the main thing, so that it's just to subsidize that period of time while you're not able to earn your income. If we're going to look at wealth protection, there's, you know, we can elaborate quite a bit on that. Um, like I mentioned, there's different life stage, stage events. And another thing that we all take for granted is, um, is death. It's a topic that not many people want to deal with. But in the event of death, I mean, you've, you've worked your life to such a stage, you've, you've accumulated all this wealth, you've potentially got families of your own. Um, what happens with all this wealth now? So the, the first and foremost, most important thing that you need to do is get a will in place. And guys, look, it's not an exciting topic, but it's something that you need to do. And it's, we've got to realize that you can't be selfish. Um, you've got family members that, that's, that rely on what you brought um, to the table. And if you don't have a will, you're going, to leave, you're going to leave that up into the hands of the state, and the state will then decide what happens with all of your belongings. So first and foremost, guys, get a will in place. A will's going to be your last, your last say. Um, it's going to say to, to, to the rest of the world what you want to happen with your personal items. So, at APSA, I know for instance, 9 out of 10 times you're going to walk into a branch, you're going to be able to see an advisor then, you'll be able to draft up a will. It's not going to cost you anything, it's just going to cost you a bit of time and go and get that sorted. So that's one thing about protecting your wealth. Another thing as well is that we forget that upon death, um, death often comes with costs, so these things like life policies. Don't make that your mother's problem, don't make it your father's problem. Guys, get a life policy in place, get a funeral policy in place. Make sure that those sort of costs are, are taken account for. Um, don't need that, like I say, to your loved ones to now run around and get themselves into debts. Um, especially when you start younger, life policies are very cheap. Um, funeral policies are cheap, they're very affordable. And it just takes that stress off your family members because they're often the ones that are, are left with all the burden of securing, worrying about your burial, worrying about the source of the money. So that's just something that's just being a little bit selfless. Um, but yeah, that goes hand in hand with protecting your wealth that you generated. So I want to ask a question. Um, when it comes to the banking business, I, I've seen you guys supporting different sectors. Um, I'm an artist. I, I, I have a business. I probably have a business plan. I want to open a music. I want to open a studio. I, 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 can, I can project my finances. How, is APSA looking at the, uh, the, the art and culture also as part of the business? If you guys do, what are the, 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 the mitigating factors and what are the issues that you, you, that you, that you would you'd like to be out and out that are a concern, especially from you guys within the art and culture, if you want a loan for your business? Okay, 
so EFSA definitely does do that. Um, they will look into providing finance. Um, if you're an up and coming artist, you want to get yourself established. Um, a lot of the time, artists are, are operating as sole proprietors or they, or they in their own capacity or they're part of a business. So what the bank's always going to want to do is, is see proof of income. Um, so that's always a big factor. So bank statements to, to prove that you're earning an income. So the bank's going to look at that. They're going to look at contracts, as you mentioned as well. You, what contracts do you have in place? What are the duration of these contracts? Who are these contracts with? So the bank just basically wants to see from their point of view how, how much of a risk are you? How likely is it, is, is it that they'll get their money back at the end of the day? Um, so basically your contracts, basically proof of rev, uh, revenue, and um, go and visit, go, go visit your bank and then just provide them with that information. Um, they'll then put you through an underwriting process and then from there um, they'll obviously approve or, or disapprove and then they might come back and ask for more information. But I mean, you can, you can walk that through. Each case is going to be um, unique, obviously. So in my comment is Ms. Bell again. Um, the music industry is complex. It's a long value chain of different aspects um, that contribute towards it, right? There's a lot that one needs to take into consideration when going into music. Um, we've reached the part of the program where uh, we will allow our panelists to give their closing remarks. Then after that, um, or rather, let, 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 should we take the questions first? Yeah, let's take the questions first and then the, the panelists will give the, the closing remarks. So can I please get a round of hands? I'll take three rounds. Uh, of three questions. Uh, I'll start with you, Putu. Good job, Mr. Pagami Silisan. Now, Putu, the Bamile, Bamichu. So, guys, tell us on the level to all, and if you have a question, um, so I've, I've, I've also captured you, Putu. That, that's my first one. Okay, um, my name is Azukir Luchete, but I'm a, I'm a rapper and I'm a, my stage name is Ru. My, my question is for Utazit. Um, earlier you talked about the profit and loss when you judge the single. How much you're going to put into a single of a song. What do you base that um, profit and loss projection off of? Uh, you base it on you music You base it on music sales. Only just on music sales, not on your performance and on other revenues like same deals and ads. No, you just base it on basically a music, on the music sales. Yeah. How, however, lately they are they, they, they sometimes base it on a song itself. If it 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 is likely to get like a sing deal, a sing you know a sing deal, right? A sing deal is when your song is licensed to be on an ad. It use. You know, it's it, it used for maybe a DS, the DSTV Super Sports, you know, that song that is playing maybe before PSL games or something like that. Then, or maybe an ad of a certain ad. So if, if a person who's doing a PNL can say, I want to, I think we are going to pitch this song. Maybe there's a campaign, as a record company, there's a company who are doing with Shell. You know, uh, and I think this song is gonna try and pitch it there as well. There's a revenue that we might get. Also, they can base it on that. Can I follow up? Yeah, young follow up question. Just a young man. Yeah. Um, for an unknown artist now, for the unknown artist, how would you base that profit and loss for them, not knowing how much they would be, would they would um, they have sold? That's exactly it. That's 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 it. A, a job of an air now. When you listen to a song, you have to determine how much you think it's gonna make. <laughs> when you listen to it, you have to determine how much you think it's gonna make. You might, you you, you might project it lower and it surprises you, or you might project it higher and then you're on deficit. So if I say I'm thinking I'm gonna make kind of trend with your song and it makes 20 rand, I'm in a deficit. And then my boss is a record company, they'll be like. We spent 10 rand thinking we we're gonna get 90 rand. We only get 20, 10 rand back. You are fired. Yeah. Easy, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Guys, ask everyone the question. You know, all these components of the value chain are important. <laughs> okay, well, really, Kamala Mulona. Uh, my question is for Sisi. Sisi, I wanna know, Ukona um, Mesuko Putino and Anasambo in terms of distributing royalties. Do you guys give like same percentages in terms of if you produce a beat and then uh, a certain artist makes a song, 
Does the producer get a 50% and then does the artist get a 50% value? Right? Who can make sure between you and Sambo? Yes, there is a difference. Uh, with Samro, um, the percentage the percentages are determined by uh, the people coming to register the music with Samro. If Zex comes as an artist and then he comes to notify a song, Zex would have had a discussion or rather with the people who worked on the song that I as an artist would get maybe seventy five percent and um, the producer would get would get maybe twenty five percent. So it's, it's determined by the people who come to register the song with some law. It could be 25, 25, 25% uh, between four people, it varies. But then as long as the, the percentages comes up to 100%. So it varies with some law. But with Sampra, it's a standard rate. 65% would go to the artist, 35% would go to the, the sessionist. Okay. Yes. Good. Um, I have a series of questions. Is that, is that all right? It's fine, it's fine. Um, for, for an independent artist, is it is it still are we still able to do like a major record deal, or is it because for an example for distribution uh, for an independent artist, the platform such as this show kit where I can upload my song, I can distribute for me. Is it still worth? Uh, doing a record deal with a record company is it, or staying at independence? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, with Sampra, it really doesn't matter. If you come as an independent and then uh, you register your music with us, you would get what is worth to you. Um, if you, you are an independent record uh, uh, artist, and then you, you produce your own music, you distribute your own music, you get the whole 100%. But then if you have a publisher or a record company publishing your music, they are entitled to the earnings of your recordings. Because they, they will be now uh, advertising you or... Um, what, what's the name? Um, distributing your song and then uh, making sure that your song is it's put out there and it's received from you. Everywhere it goes. I hear, I hear your, your, your question says, do you have to sign a record, a record contract right now? Now that you have all these platforms available that you can have your music paid to ship with without a record label. That's your question, right? Um, exactly like insurance and like banking, you know? Uh, banking, you have private wealth, you have private clients, you have Gold clients, we have, we have just bronze clients. I don't know if you have bronze clients. It's the same thing with you, with you as an artist. You have to look at yourself and be like, who is the artist that I think is so successful? And when you look to the every artist that is successful, look how they are there, how, how they are. When they are there as probably a private client, you probably need to, to be a private client, right? You need to be maybe making about 25,000 a month so, uh, level. Then if you are a private world, it should be like 50K or 100K a month, right? So same thing as an artist, you have to be to say to yourself, if I wanna be like Zayx, I'm, 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 in, I'm in the machine. I wanna be like Black Coffee. He's within the machine. I wanna be like Beyonce. He's within the machine. Then you have to ask yourself that if I want to be those particular artists, uh, they are in this particular machine. If I'm not part of that machine, would I be that artist? If not, then what kind of artist would I be? So it is your choice. You can have your music picture she put it individually, like, but like I said earlier on, there is no one who's going to be talking about you in Zambia. There's no one who's going to be talking about you in Nigeria because you are here. But you know what I mean? So you, you're just gonna have to take, you know, you, you, you have to, what you call the thing, just, uh, you know, tell her make your own, tell her make your own talent. Be like, yo, listen, I just wanna be the biggest, biggest artist in Port Elizabeth. And I don't care about, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be going to Joburg, I don't wanna be going to Deben, I just wanna be a guy, anyway, in the Eastern Cape, I wanna be the biggest guy. Then there's no need for you, because you can travel the Eastern Cape within a day. Then there's no need for you to sign a record label. But when you say, I wanna be a national artist, that I wanna go to Limpopo and everybody not off me, then 
in a minute. Still busy. We have a couple of second boxing machine. So in a way, the record label is like a boxing machine. Yeah. Just scaling up. Yes. And also, it depends on your capital. Yes. If you're an artist and you have the capital to promote yourself, you can do that. But then, with the publishers, they have the capital to promote your music because promoting an artist or a song, it it requires money. Okay, thank you. And then, sorry, I have a few uh, questions. Um, for, for record companies, for, uh, to my understanding, there's a contract called the 360 deal. Is that still re relevant now? Is those contracts still there? Or how safe is it to do a 360 deal? So, for the answer, sir. Now, a 360 deal has just been introduced. It hasn't been there. Record companies before they will sign you as an artist and then that's it. But now record companies they will sign you. Yo. Yeah. 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 You know, so so record companies would 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 sign you now and have what you call three particular three sixty, they will they will call it in their business term a passive income. So they will have passive income on on the distribute on, on the Sampra royalties. Passive, passive income on, on, on the sound, which is publishing royalties, passive income on your performance, passive, passive income, let's say you had to do, you had to do uh, a, a merchandise, passive income on merchandise, passive income on, 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 on sync deals. So a 360 is when the rhythm company says, when your name is mentioned and there's money, we are there. <laughs> so, so, they, so they said, do I think it's fair? I don't. I don't. But do I understand why they are doing it? I do. I do understand why they are doing it. But maybe it's because I was lucky. I, I got to work with this record company, and I, and by the time the digital business came through, I was already established. So maybe that's why I'm like, oh no, you don't do that. But maybe I'm thinking to myself, if I was an unknown right now. And record companies are telling me that we are no longer selling CDs. And I can see that they are no longer selling CDs. You know, I can see that like, CDs are not selling. They're like, yo, before we used to sell CDs, right now we are no longer selling CDs. So for us to reinvest in you, we're not going to make our money by distributing your music. We'll make our money, we we'll need to make our money, just a portion of what you do. I probably would have just let go of some of my, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and with that said, um, you must be careful when you sign a 360 degree uh, contract. You must be very careful because when it comes to royalties, we have a lot of artists coming through to us and say, we don't get our, our royalties. How are we not getting our royalties? And then we would like, we contact your record company where you signed and they tell us that no, this person has signed a 360 degree, meaning each and every ending of your recording they get a percentage. Do you understand? So is it, it's, it's as simple as you've signed your earning to that particular record company. So be careful when you sign any contract. And then with a 360 deal, uh, for like an up and coming artist, for like a very small artist, is that worth doing? And then renegotiating your renegotiating contract later? I uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you see, for, for me, I'll tell you, this is so simple, you know, and I think it goes to everyone in this room. Sometimes you just think about it, sit down and be like, okay, I'm signing this contract, it might be fair, it might be unfair. But man, it's only 30 songs, or it's only 20 songs, because I'm signing only two albums. I just want to get in. I can sacrifice these 20 songs. I can sacrifice this album after this whatever, then I'm going to come back and negotiate. But I just want to be, I just want to make sure that at least I'm the, at right now, I just, I'm working on my name. I'm not working on ownership. I'm working on my name. Then after two albums, I'll be working on ownership. Then you come back, you're like, yo, now right now, this is what is going to go. I'm no longer signing that 360. This is what is going to go on my third album. You know? So maybe sometimes when you're not sure, but you see an opportunity, just minimize the engagement of the time that you're going to spend with a record company. You know, like I know 14 months. Be like, yo, I agree with everything you've written there, but I just want to spend 14 months with you. That's like one year, one year, one year, one year, two months. And then you you there, you know, in that in that two years or 24 months, in that two years, you just want to push them and make sure that they push you so hard that people know of you after two albums. Then you can come back and be like, I'm not signing the renewal of the of the album. 
now let us negotiate. So sometimes it, it is about it is about like a give and take. Like okay, what can I give? What is so most important to me? I can give this. What I can take, I can take. Like for instance, someone like myself. For me, for me, other artists they they will sign their global rights to record companies. I don't be, because I have relationships with people in Europe and also in the US. So for me, I, I really, when you say world, I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm giving you Africa. You know what I mean? But me, but you, you, then, you don't, then I, I probably would say to you, ah, you are, you are being stupid by selling your rights worldwide. But maybe you don't have plans for the next three years to go into Europe. So you can give those rights away. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah and, and then you can fight for something else. So don't fight for something you don't need. Let go of it, fight for something that you do need. I'm almost happy on everything that's said. Like, guys, the, the, the artists, the entertainment artists are expensive. They charge per hour. But then, if you are an up and coming artist, or you're just an artist who's been in the industry and you're getting a recording deal, it doesn't hurt to pay that session fee so that they can take you through the contract, they make you understand what each and every deal means. Take the contract to the lawyers before you sign, they will explain it to you and go through the fine print and they make you understand before you sign on anything. They are expensive, they charge per hour, some charge per, not per hour, they charge per second. But then, that's how expensive they are. But then it's worth it than to sign your money away. You'd be signing your 10 years of earnings to a record company when you can sign in for three years. You can have some money as my brother. Yeah? <laughs> you can always ask questions when we have. Um, hello, everyone. Um, this is Nicole. So, um, good day and this dinner. My question is okay, uh, yes. My question is okay, this is a chain, right? The banking, Sampa, and a record label. So as an artist, do you have to 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 be signed under under a record label, a, a recording company, then also sign under Usampra for the distribution of finances? Because at first I understood Usampra as a as a mid middle person between radio and your music and your work in terms of the finances. So. Is it a must that, as an artist, I must be signed under a record label and sample for the distribution of um, Okay, so let, let me clarify this. With, with um, uh, the middlemen, I meant in terms of royalty collection, nothing else. We're not obliged to promote any artist. We're not obliged to uh, get a play for any artist. So it's only when it comes to royalties and only middle time royalties. <laughs> only when I don't know we get a lot of money from some who's eggs, please. So don't listen to the eggs. Um, we are a middle person when it comes to royalties only. And we are not responsible for any airplay. And guys, I, I just want to emphasize this, ne? Don't go and say, Upalisa said, when you're an artist and you've got your music play, uh, your music recorded, you are entitled to, to royalties. Yes, you are, but you need to get a play. We only pay per play. So if your music is not playing, there is nothing for us to collect. We only collect for music that is playing, guys. But what if my music is playing on YouTube? I've uploaded my music, I see there, there are 343 people who have played my music through views. Then what happens? Um, when your music is playing, go, go YouTube, man, and you just put your music video, you just uploaded your music video without any proper channels, you're just going to get the likes and the views. And you're not going to get any royalties. Hence, there is Capasso. I mentioned Capasso, guys. Yeah. That they represent you digitally. So you need to consult Capasso. Capasso, they will do all your paperwork. You don't have to go from pillar to post. They will do your paperwork. 
and they would make sure that if your song is viewed and it's, it's, it's uh, getting likes on, on YouTube, you get royalties. But then if you take your phone right now and then you just upload because you have an account with YouTube, you're just marketing yourself, it's fine, we'll watch you. You'll get bookings rather, because the promoters will be saying, okay, who's this thing? You want you to come and perform at our gigs? But then when it comes to royalties, you can't. Uh, evening, everyone. Kamla Mugubiopelu. Um, my first question is going to go to Sister Sambra. Um, so, as you said, you know, a person can either be local, in time I'm big in PE, maybe I'm big in SA, and Sambra said the SA is probably for South Africa, right? Yeah. So now what happens if I'm big in Japan? Can I still rely on you guys to get yes. away? Yes, we've got... Um, uh, in the end, I was going to refer you guys to our website. We've got um, bilateral agreements. By bilateral, bilateral agreements, it means that we've got contracts with companies abroad, with collecting societies abroad. And all the collecting societies that we have bilateral agreements with, they are on our website. So if you are interested, because we artists are international now, your music cannot just be playing in South Africa. It's playing everywhere. So with bilateral agreement, we have uh, the contract with the CMOs or collecting societies that if our SA artist music is playing in Japan, you collect on our behalf and we collect on your behalf. Mm. So if your music is playing on any of the countries that we have the agreement with, they will collect for you and they will give us your money and then we will distribute to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my next question, I'm not sure who's going to be able to answer this one, but it's about alternative ways of making money from your music. I mean, who could say, did mention something about sync deals, like having your stuff on adverts and stuff like that. But now what happens, because fact is, well, this might sound negative, but that's a proper song, you know? <laughs> they might tell me, hey, your cover's too big, so, you know, what other skills do you have? And maybe I'm a lyricist and I'm really good at that aspect, or I'm a composer, so I'm really good with melodies or something like that. How viable is that line of work when it comes to music? It's more viable than the one on stage. Way more viable. Um, so, they are so, like, okay, I, I don't wanna lie, who is the one in my face? Like, I don't wanna You know, like, who is the one in my you know, you know, um, uh, and 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 obviously today was not enough because we are only just talking like the surface, like black a pencil. You know, as you go down, maybe a ball. It's like music is like mining. The more you go down, the more, the more the mining comes. You know, and uh, so, like basically, as a song, so, man, man, kuruma je. A songwriter, so someone who writes songs, you know, like you are an author. So you write a song, you write for my, you write for Uzix. Uzix, you are not very cool but then maybe the song is maybe say it's clap your hands a little by yourself, right? And every time when that song plays, I mean, I would only be getting my royalties um, from Samba. But Kasamro, I will be told when I pay, I'm going to be told me. Because you composed the song. And then, my figure same thing, let's say, say, people Coca Cola, put, hey, I like the song. My son, maybe, or Voda you know, my summer campaign is about clapping hands. I like the song, I'm gonna be like, probably, plus, manners, it's, it's gonna be like, it's a summer campaign, three, four months, probably might be millions of friends. And guess that millions goes to? To you. Yeah. Not the artist. What? Okay, not, not the person they are. So it goes to the person who wrote. However, there's going to be my others that's going to come to me because there's my voice there. So somebody's going to come to me like, yeah, but then that act is this family's his voice. So we are here to take only his voice. It's okay, he did not write, but his voice is it's his voice. So so there's money there, you know. There's serious, serious money. There's also, there's also... Oh guys, I told you that. Men's ear training is called. So I have a corner man, I have a corner man. Very fast, I say. You know, you more than welcome to go out and call me, guys. And and this must me must me call that interesting. You know, so he 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 look at that. He that means there are PR people 
the, the PR guys now who just who, who just make it. I mean, we we hire PR. We pay sometimes up to thirty thousand rand a PR a month. PR company, you know. There's also studies, the dances. There's there's a lot that you can do. I'm saying to you, if you look at the at the music industry as a car. Even when you are just a, 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 a steering wheel, you're also part of it. It's just that thing that we just want to be the whole car. Yeah. And you know, you know, like when you look at it, like that's serious different components that are making that particular car, which is the career now. Something that is making who's it. There's so many people are just making sure, you know. When, when that deal has been signed, probably, you know, a person who's been signing a lot of deals this, this time around will be Jay-Z, you know. And then you know something like like someone like Steve Stout, guy next to Jay Z, announcing that deal and, and and saying, "Yo, we've worked hard on this one." You like, oh, what, what did you do? And and they're all making money. So there's serious, serious, serious a lot of money. You don't have to be a singer. You can also be a songwriter, and you can make enough money as a songwriter than a singer sometimes. Okay, okay. Um, in the interest of time, guys, Bella, um, what do we want our artists to perform, yes? Yes. Um, please don't ask in questions as in 15. I know we encourage asking, I, I said <laughs> I'm giving, I said, oh, 